Last year, I was joined by my colleague, uh, Mesh Nakani, and we discussed search and searching outside of the box, searching outside of just your own content, bringing in stuff from the outside world of knowledge. This year, I'm going to talk uh, or share some thoughts about text analytics, and the talk is text analytics for non-experts. Um, at the end of my talk, I'm going to uh, uh, tell you about a fun competition we're running. Um, last year, uh, sorry, last month was the second year of Taxonomy Bootcamp in London, which brought a lot of Europeans uh, together. A great event, and we run, uh, ran a competition there that I'm going to repeat here. Okay, so text analytics for non-experts. Um, Synaptica is actually a latecomer into the world of text analytics. We have over two decades experience in the field of taxonomies and ontologies, both software and also building taxonomies and ontologies in fairly large-scale projects and large-scale indexing projects. So that's our background. Um, for the last couple of years, we have uh, been developing um, text analytics solutions, and these were based on open source software, things like Stanford NLP, OpenNLP, and Gate, which is produced by Sheffield University. Um, we have formed a long-term partnership with Sheffield University in which their NLP team are working with us to help us to try and bring um, that kind of functionality into our user base uh, who are all based on, on taxonomy and ontologies. Like many newcomers to the field, we encountered basically a jargon wall, um, a lot of esoteric terminology uh, which we had to learn and which people coming into this field had to learn. And um, one of the things we want to do is try and basically tear down that wall. So um, text analytics for non-experts is probably a misnomer for this audience because I'm sure most people in this audience are an expert at uh, one of the disciplines in, in our field. Um, so what I'm not saying here is that text analytics isn't complex and I'm not saying that you don't need the help of experts or that you need sophisticated tools, you do. Um, what I am saying is that uh, there is going to be a reward from effort put into demystifying some of the processes of natural language processing um, and simplifying some of the user experiences. Basically, when we want to broaden the franchise, we want to make um, those kinds of activities uh, uh, doable by taxonomists, content people, um, not people who necessarily have a specialism in uh, computational linguistics. Uh, my analogy for that is, uh, is the car slide I've got up. So when I want to buy a new car, I want a car that's designed by drivers, built by engineers, <laughs> not the other way around. Uh, and I think some of the, uh, some of the tools and processes are, um, are, are more from the uh, engineered side instead of the experience that we want our end users to uh, to engage in. So wind back the clock one year to Taxonomy Bootcamp 2016, I attended a great session moderated by Stephanie Lemieux, the new um, chair of the Taxonomy Bootcamp track of, uh, of this conference, um, and with presentations by uh, Monica Fulvio from National Geographic and Leela Lee from Consumer Reports. Um, one of the great things about these events and coming together for these events is it brings the community together and everyone has something to learn from each other. Lemieux's uh, session made a big impact on me. The speakers cogently described pain points and things that they needed, their requirements and expectations, and frankly, my company did not um, have the solutions to all of those things. We did some things, but we didn't have the solutions to many of them. So it's a big learning experience, a humbling experience, and um, one comes away from that and tries to innovate and tries to uh, uh, address some of those gaps. Also presenting last year was uh, Tom Remy, whose uh, book Deep Text, which is uh, available here as well, um, basically summarizes his distilled wisdom from years of doing text analytics and working with different tools. And that has also been a, an influencer on our uh, projects. Research and development. Um, so for two decades, 
uh, we've been producing robust enterprise software for ontology management, taxonomy management. Um, R&D is a big part of our culture. Uh, we spend uh, an enormous, proportionally an enormous amount of our income back into R&D. Um, uh, and R&D, um, the keynote was extremely ex inspiring. R&D for us is uh, also about play. It's about experimenting without bounds with and, and just um, be, trying to be creative, uh, play with um, problems and solutions and not necessarily just say we've got to have something produced as a result of that. Um, our approach is, is to R&D is focusing on what customers tell us they want. That's the driving experience. And then using industry standards and participating in the industry standards community to help us engineer the solutions to work uh, well and robustly to that. But it all starts with, with the customer experience. Um, Mesh Nikani from Singapore, a uh, UIX design company, shared this slide with uh, me uh, earlier this year, uh, which I really like. It's an illustration um, for me of a guide to uh, both R&D and product development. Um, it's a journey, not a destination. It is something where it works better uh, when you start building simple but fully functional components and then you move to more sophisticated, fully functional components. So the bottom line on, on the chart here, you know, the uh, analogy, you start with a skateboard, you turn it into a scooter, you turn that into a bicycle, into a motorbike, and you end up with a car. And this evolution of product design and product development is how we, how we do things at Synaptica. So I'm going to have a look at a handful of areas in the text analytics field that we have seen as pain points. We've seen as things that, that uh, we, can, uh, we want to uh, learn from these and bring them into how we do things in Synaptica. So the first one here is it's important to support um, uh, expert systems and expert uh, modes of editing and building out rules like these on the slide. Um, but uh, graphical tools to build expressions and to guide somebody through rule building um, both improve the speed of development, the accuracy of development, and, they, um, and there's much uh, room to do to improve these. And also, um, systems that only support a sort of an expert mode of editing are missing out on a much wider audience of people who would like to get involved in rule building. So we heard people say taxonomists want to edit the rules themselves and gain self-sufficiency as non-experts and that AutoCAD rules should be accessible to taxonomists without the need for coding. In the example we've got on screen, um, we took uh, basically a, a graphical approach to converting the NASA thesaurus into a uh, machine indexing rules base. Um, so in this one example here, I've got the concept supersonic combustion of ramjet engines, or scramjets, um, we can mine out of the natural semantic structure of the NASA thesaurus um, rules uh, which can be presented simply in a graphical way that would otherwise require about 57 parameters in parenthetical, um, parenthetical operators and constraints. So um, making that graphical is part of just making it easier for people to eyeball the whole picture quickly, um, understand it, and uh, edit it graphically as well. Um, along with this is uh, the ability to um, uh, synchronize and use um, linked open data sources as well. Um, so there's a lot of information right within semantic structures that can be informative to the categorization classification rules development process. So we all think about mining the text of documents to discover the concepts, to discover the entities, to discover the structures, and that's absolutely one track to go down. But by linking out to um, control vocabularies, uh, so this one here, we, we process mesh vocabulary. We produce 1.2 million indexing rules just by processing mesh. Um, but linking out to linked data is um, 
when we make a same as assertion between any entity in one of our control vocabularies and we make a same, same as assertion to um, knowledge in the linked open data cloud, we can pull back from that cloud an absolute wealth of knowledge that also will help um, the indexing and classification process because it's got all the knowledge that um, uh, if it was done by a human indexer, we've got all this language in our head and we've got all this background knowledge in our head. And what we need to do is help the system tap into that and a lot of that is in the linked open data cloud. So we did an example of this uh, in last year's um, in last year's talk, uh, where we took uh, news databases, we linked, we processed them using the associated press taxonomies, and then we linked the associated press taxonomies out to um, DBpedia, and then we could answer questions like, find me U.S. Uh, find me news articles about U.S. tennis players born in Michigan after 1980. Okay, that information wasn't in the content. It isn't in the news articles. What's in the news articles is information that mentions a particular tennis player. But by connecting the associated press taxonomies to DBpedia, we tap into a wealth of other parameters that we can use to retrieve and classify information. OK, moving on. Let me just go on here. Um, Another aspect uh, is silos, but I'm not talking about data silos, I'm talking about application silos. So one of the pain points we have learned about is um, having to do one job in one system and then leave that system and go and do the next task in another system or export the data from one system to the next to carry on with the work when this is these are highly interrelated tasks, and they should be within a single workflow. So breaking down application silos is another important aspect of, uh, of work. So fragmented workflows, significant pain point. We heard taxon uh, people say taxonomists want to avoid switching between different systems and different UIs, so having to export uh, data from one system to another. So the coextensive development of taxonomies and rules to be supported by um, automatic real-time synchronization between rules development and the source construction is um, one of the areas that we're working on quite, uh, quite strongly. And uh, also the, the um, testing process needs uh, direct access to, text, uh, to test documents and the ability to feed back naturally in one workflow to the refinement of, uh, of concepts and rules. Um, Next area is no black boxes. So uh, we learn that taxonomists want categorization rules to be completely transparent and data portable, not locked into um, some uh, black, black box rule system. Um, so one of the ways that we are looking at that is just trying to make the rules really easy to understand, trying to um, where we're using semantic networks, make sure those networks are linked open data so that the data is uh, shareable, portable, open, accessible, um, and nothing is, uh, is happening in this sort of black box world. Same goes for the learning, uh, for the uh, learning uh, machine, human machine learning processes. They need to be transparent. It needs to be obvious what interactions are triggering changes to the rules, not happening in the background. OK. And I'm, I'm sneaking up to my last slides. So, um, Finding structure in unstructured text, I think, because uh, Jane's looming behind me. I shall, uh, I shall skip that, but it'll be in the slide deck. Um, <laughs> So our, <laughs> our, uh, our, our internal product development manifesto, things we're doing, is, is also going to be in the slide deck. I won't summarize this verbally now, um, but I will move to my, uh, my uh, closing. So this is my segue slide to the competition I, um, I mentioned. Uh, so um, our uh, text analytics tools are, are still in development. We have a lot of really cool things that we can show and tell. but. Um, they're not product released. We have, however, just released a product called Graphite, which is a completely new taxonomy and ontology management system built on graph databases. And um, what we did at Taxonomy Bootcamp London was we run uh, a, a tweet contest. And what we want to do is say, 
Um, Jim Sweeney, who's the product manager, has just released a tweet under two hashtags, KM World, hashtag KM World, and hashtag Synaptic of Graphite. All we want you to do is say, I love taxonomy, fill in the rest, gives you 100 characters, and what we're doing is we're giving away uh, one year's first prize, six months' as second prize, and three months' as third prize, full service uh, access to graphite with technical support. Thank you. Yeah.